First of all, James, how are you? I'm good. I'm healthy. <laughs> My bandmate, not so much, I guess. Well, uh, hopefully it'll all turn out well for today. Yeah, I think it'll be fine. We've got a doctor coming to see him. So. Okay. Well, I kind of want to jump straight into it yeah. um, and talk about retro futurism. Yeah. <laughs> um, when you were growing up, uh -huh. did you have a notion of what? Did you have a notion of what the future would be like? Did you think about it? Um, I did think about it. <laughs> I. You know, I knew that it was difficult to predict how the future would look like because there was a TV show that I used to watch, and I cannot remember the name of it, but um, it had been made in the 60s, mm -hmm. and it, was, it took place in the early 80s. So it was a futuristic mm -hmm. show that was taking place in the 80s, and I was living in the 80s, and we didn't have floating cars, right. and we didn't have laser guns and all that stuff. So I knew that <laughs> I knew early on it was, it was always a... Uh, a losing bet, you know, to try and gamble on what the future would be like. But I was always fascinated with science fiction and stuff as a kid, reading Ray Bradbury books and okay. stuff like that. I was a big fan. And um, has this developed over the years to, have, I, for instance, do you still watch sci-fi mo mo movies? Um, actually not very much because I think science fiction is, there's too much science fiction now and so much of it is, is sort of poorly done. Um, but you know, it's it was fantastic stuff for my, you know, adolescent mind. Mm -hmm. Well, um, the reason why I ask is because uh, the album is uh, yeah. quite heavily influenced by yeah. by these uh, retro futuristic right, elements. Right. So, um, can you maybe explain how you and Brian uh, found this uh, this right. topic or found this influence? Well, there was, you know, after the first record, you know, there's a, a sort of a period of time where you start to figure out, like, what do, what do we, uh, what is this going to look like? What's, it, you know, what's the feel of this whole thing? And um, one evening, Brian and I went to the, um, to the observatory up at the top of the hill near his house. There's the Griffith Observatory, and it's a really beautiful building. And, and, um, and we just started pondering all of this, you know, cosmology stuff and and found it really fascinating and then it just started to percolate into this, you know, maybe this is some, some sort of a theme that we could run with, you know. And uh, there were a lot of conversations we had about that sort of thing. And um, then in speaking to Jacob Escobedo, who designed the record covers and stuff, he jumped on it. He loved the idea too that, you know, that this would be some sort of futuristic um, idea. But since there's aspects of the music that sound pretty much from the past, you know, mm -hmm. they, they sound, there's a sort of nostalgic quality to a lot right. of the, the production. Um, it would have to be some vision of the future that was, that took place in the past, you know. Mm -hmm. So that was the idea of retro futurism. <laughs> Okay, because when this uh, idea arrived, was it then the aesthetic first that, that sparked the interest or was it sonically as well or musically? Well, I mean, I think that if you, if you listen to the music, it, it just reminds me of, of things that were popular in the 60s, especially the, some of the choral mm -hmm. arrangements um, on the choruses and stuff. Um, may, reminds me of like, bands like The Fifth Dimension you know, that we're, we're futurists, you know, they were, they were thinking about the future and they, they really, um, I think, had this idea that they were changing the world and this was the new age that was coming and, and all that. So it sort of reminds me of that really old uh, sound and, you know, which the science fiction of the 60s, I guess, right. is what I'm thinking, yeah. Okay. Um, well. It is quite well futuristic, which in, in a sense is also a bit experimental. Uh -huh. And this being a, a project aside from, from uh, the shins, it, does this uh, allow you to try out things like this? Um, yeah, I mean, I think that's one of the cool things about Broken Bells is, um, you know, when I'm collaborating with somebody like Brian, he's bringing so many interesting ideas. Um, it allows me and it almost requires me to, to sort of become someone else and to think very differently about what I'm doing and what I'm singing and the melodies I'm coming up with and so on. Um, so it's sort of challenging but really exciting and fun. 
Have you surprised yourself at, at oh, yeah, some point? Oh, yeah, definitely, yeah, which is great, you know, what a cool thing to have happen. Um, you know, because I, I, I do the shins stuff, you know, in a, mm -hmm. in a very traditional way, really. You know, I usually am sitting with acoustic guitar and, and just trying to come up with, you know, the best melodies I can. But working with Brian, it's, um, the palette is just sort of exploded and the different sounds and dif different sort of rhythms and so on that we work with um, allows me to really experiment a lot more, which is very fun. Well, working with Brian, because you have quite diverse musical backgrounds, mm -hmm. does it challenge you? Uh, <coughs> do you challenge each other in that sense then as well? Um, I suppose so. Um, it's funny because, you know, Brian went to school, uh, to college in Athens, Georgia, okay. and was immersed in the music of that town, which at the time was Olivia Tremor Control, Neutral Milk Hotel, a lot of those sort of, uh, that Elephant Six sort of stuff, you know? And, um, and so he really, at the same time, I was living in Albuquerque, and my friends and I, we were all obsessed with all those bands, too like the apples in stereo and stuff like that. So um, in, in a lot of ways, we have a very similar background. Okay. Um, it's when you go a little bit further than that, that when he was in high school in Atlanta, he was um, totally immersed in hip hop culture, mm -hmm. you know, which I never really was. Mm -hmm. um, but for the fact that it's all over the radio and has been for a long time. But um, so we have like, he's got very interesting influences and then a whole lot of his like wheelhouse that I completely understand and and really um, am fond of. You know? Did you know about these uh, early similarities before you met him? No, I didn't. You know, before I I didn't really know anything about uh, Brian. I knew the Gray album. Okay. You know, and we had just sort of picked that up. Um, so so that's all I knew when I met Brian. Okay. Yeah, didn't know what he looked like or anything. 